Now, what is yeah. the big? Now, what is the biggest mistake you see screenwriters make? First-time screenwriters make in, when they're writing a screenplay. I. So I always have a hard time. A few people ask me, like, what's what are, you know, general mistakes that generally people make? I, I don't know, but I can tell you a lot of mistakes I made okay. at the beginning. And the biggest thing was, like, I started out coming from a, kind of a literary tradition. Like, I, I, would, I wanted to be a novelist when I was younger. And so, you know, I, just like, you know, I'm sure like you and like a lot of people, I would started out reading the novels, you know, falling in love with King when I was, you know, 12, 13 oh, years old. And, yeah. um, and then, you know, graduating to to more sophisticated, complex literature and stuff. And so when I started writing screenplays for the first time, of course, I wanted to be literary. I wanted it to be poetic and have all these like beautiful metaphors and stuff. And I didn't understand that that was largely like, that's not the job of a screenplay. The job is to be cinematic and it's allowing the imageries to be the poetry. And, and, and that's, that was a difficult process for me to, to go through was like, and the biggest thing was, you know, reading scripts that are cinematic help you break through those kind of notions. These ideas of kind of, you know, I want my script to be read like a novel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Different not really format. the function of the script. I mean, sure you can. I mean, you read like Tarantino stuff and it does read like a novel and it's beautiful and it's fun. But there's but one, the but, there's, time, but there's one Tarantino. <laughs> there's not there's many one guys. Tarantino, <laughs> and, and I do think that there are a lot of great, I believe there's an ocean of undiscovered talent out there. And oh, yes. talent. And we're all, all you know, busting our asses to make the best art that we can. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of unrecognized talent. But but ultimately it comes down to right now there are certain norms that until you are Tarantino, you need to persuade people. You need to sell yourself, right. which means you need to give the best presentation that's going to persuade people to invest the time and have the vision, whatever that takes. And, you know, learning the, the conventions of storytelling, learning the convention of screenwriting helps you. Um, but ultimately it's not, it, you shouldn't be enslaved by it. If you have a truly original idea and it works, you're going to find a way to make, to communicate it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's excellent. And I, and I do think that is a mistake that I did. I made my mistake too. When I first started writing screenplays, I was just like, I want this, like every, every description was this beautiful artistic using 50 cent words constantly. Yeah. And, and everyone was like, Oh, I'm so look how great I am. Cause I was able yeah. to do this. And then, well, there's no, there's no conflict. There's no this, there's no that. And I don't care. Yeah. You, I don't want to read this. It's, it's too hard to read. <laughs> When the yeah, one thing that was a, a big breakthrough for me was reading Hemingway. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, he's a novelist, but, like, when you read his stuff, I I was completely shocked just reading, like, he would use the simplest, plain spoken words. Mm -hmm. And it still managed to build this kind of sense of anxiety or tension or fear or uh, infatuation. And he always did that with a kind of, like, a super simple, simple vernacular and it wasn't even cinematic either. It was just a way of, I always say that Hemingway was the one that like taught me, taught me what subtext was. And then it was Judith Weston that taught me how subtext worked. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of the progress between the two, but, but Hemingway, I strongly write, especially his short stories. Mm -hmm. But, um, and King yeah, too, I mean, his, King, his, King as well. King is so simple. Like he writes in very simple language. Um, I felt, I felt because I, I, when I read on the writing, which was his amazing book. On oh yeah. yeah. He actually is like, I write in very simple terms. If you want me to write with big word, word words, here it goes. And he writes this up like insane sentence that I had to look up every other word that he wrote. It's yeah. like, it doesn't help anybody. You got to do it simply. That's, I mean, that's from my point of view, but I'd love to hear your well, opinion. Well, I mean, like recently I was rereading The Shining. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was early in his career and he was I, honestly, I thought it was beautiful, but it was verbose. It was there were moments of high literary reference and like strong, like uh, endless strands of metaphors and things like that, <laughs> which is great. And I love that. And you could see he was experimenting with it because it kind of didn't sustain itself through the entire novel. Mm -hmm. You saw that like as the tension was building or or as as the story took over, he let go of a lot of the verbosity and turned into just kind of like let the story tell itself. Right. So it's, you know, I mean, I think King, uh, a lot of his appeal is kind of he presents himself as the everyman. 
but I think deep down inside, he's got a Faulkner that's like screaming to, <laughs> to rip out of his flesh. Good point, sir. Good point. 